Thanks for staying with us. Now, did you know that workaholic is a portmanteau word? Yeah, I didn't know that. I just learned that today. It comes from combining two words, work and alcoholic. The term was first used extensively to refer to people who excessively and compulsively work in the late 1960s. You know you are a workaholic if you, um, if you tick these boxes now. Your family life is almost zero. You're not totally open about your addiction. You never stop working. Your work-life balance is non-existent. Your sleep is disturbed. You never take a holiday. You avoid social events like the plague. Now, that's to mention a few. Now, Modupe Lanre Akinsinu is a seasoned human resource professional with almost 15 years progressive and continuous experience, um, experience that spans management, consulting, HR operations, management, and HR business partnering. She provides HR advisory services uh, support across nine countries. She is an award-winning employee with a recognition across Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa. She was recently recognized as one of the top 50 corporate ladies in Nigeria by Leading Ladies Africa. Now remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Waste or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. Thank you so much for joining us, Mudupe. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, 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 guys. All right, so Mudupe, this is a very, very interesting conversation and it's so apt, especially, you know, this, this, our people say we should stop calling it new normal, but that's the truth. It's our it reality is. right now. It is. You know, absolutely. Yeah, so if you, want to define what a balanced life should look like you know what is it <laughs> okay i i mean i i i really do not agree with balance <laughs> because ah. i don't think one life can ever balance right and this is what i mean okay so if you want to look at the real meaning of balance or what we'll call equilibrium we're talking about having an equal amount of time or focus or attention, you know, for both work and life, but that can never happen, right? So if you want to look at the fact that even, I mean, any, any basic job you get, the minimum number of hours you get to invest is eight hours in a day, right? The truth is you, can, you can't have, you know, that chunk of time into the different aspects of your life that exists because life is not just one thing. Life has many expressions. So there can be the emotional part of your life. There can be the social part of your life. Mm -hmm. There is the work and many other things, right? So if you want to talk about balance as the, you know, what balance really means, you mm. cannot have that equal amount of time or focus and all of that. So a balanced life, if I want to put that in, you know, parentheses, would be a life that is properly integrated or coordinated, you know, ensuring that one is not suffering from the other or one is not suffering at the expense of the other, if you get what I mean. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that you're spending equal amount of time or attention, but you're not unmindful of those other aspects of your life so that, that when you need attention. to move to focus on that, you're able to prioritize accordingly. That's what my idea of balance is. I don't know if that works for you. Well, well, we are getting to the conversation, so we'll keep going. Awesome. It's an interesting view. Okay. Well, um, following your um, definition of work-life balance as a coordinated life. Now, I, I have a particular... Um, I often watch um, a lot of celebrities and I see how they are thriving in their career, touring, doing great, they're popular, they're famous, the world loves them. However, when it gets to their personal life or their um, family life, whether as a parent or as a sibling or, or whatever role they play in their private life, if we find out that a lot of them are failures. Take for instance, um, and well, a lot of people may not agree, but a higher percentage tend to think that in the family life, Michael Jackson was a failure. Whitney Houston as well was a failure. Why is it that they, they almost never have it together? So I, I'm not sure if there's anybody out there who has everything together to start mm. with. Mm -hmm. Now, how bad it gets may now be what, you know, differentiates one person from the other. Because what I like to tell people, you know, I, I mean, you've cited great examples. And the interesting thing is, I saw a movie recently, you know, where 
you know, about Whitney Houston, and and I just got to reflect about how big a potential she was, how such a fantastic woman she was, and everything ended the way it ended, and all of that. And then the question is, so where did it all go wrong? Mm. Now the truth is, we need to understand that life places a demand on each and every one of each and every one of us every day now let me use myself as an example i'm here on this show because i have a passion to inspire people to educate people and you know to influence people you know positively right today also happens to be my daughter's birthday okay my, my wow. twin girls clocked nine today wow. and i hosted my sisters my cause their cousins you know just had a mini you know parlor party for 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 them and when it was almost time for this, I had to take a break from that because this other part of me, I need to feed it as well. So I served my family in the morning. I served, you know, church in the morning. But then there is a part of me, you know, this part of me that wants to give back. I also ensure that I paid or gave attention to that aspect as well. So what we need to do as individuals is not to be too, don't be too monodirectional in life understand the different aspects of life that are of importance to you. And that will vary from Tammy to Dupe to Sandra to Uwa. It will vary for us, right? Mm -hmm. It's just to ensure that you're keeping your eyes on the ball, right? From time to time, when you need to dial down on work, know when to dial down and when to focus on this other thing. Mm -hmm. So it's alternating these different dimensions of life that ultimately gives us that sense of balance or fulfillment. Mm -hmm. That we're all looking for yeah mm. wow interesting tell me <laughs> <laughs> i was just i was feeling you you I'm know i'm telling you so um thank you Dupe. i love the way you um, explained um the concept of work-life balance mm -hmm. or maybe not a balance maybe an integration right so i i, I would say that you know the dynamics of this work-life balance as we know it has changed significantly since the um, you know, on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you had asked me pre-COVID sometime in January what I thought work-life balance was, right? I'd have said it's that midpoint where I feel like my professional life, my family life, you know, my personal and social life all come together in a fine balance where I'm happy and most filled. So it doesn't have to be an equilibrium, like you've said, but I kind of just feel like, one isn't thriving, you know, at the expense of the other. But now, given what has happened, you know, the hours are getting longer. In fact, the question is, are we working from home or living at work? That's the truth right <laughs> now, because, <laughs> you know, one day just fuses into another. And I just know that I have deliverables. I don't know what day is a Saturday, what day is a Sunday. Um, technology makes us accessible round the clock. And because of what has happened, right? A lot of people, the, the, the fear of job loss is kind of incentivizing this longer hours. And so I'll use myself as an example. Today, I'm working longer hours. I'm homeschooling the children. I'm having to do a lot of stuff at home, right? I'm dealing with this paranoia and anxiety of all that's going on. I get on social media, there's a barrage of, you know, scary information, and it's just overwhelming. Do you see? So I, I'm like, what's your advice for all the career moms and people out there that are just feeling overwhelmed? How can we achieve that kind of balance at this time and just essentially protect our mental health? I think I would start with, you know, the mindset. You know, there's a picture of success that has been painted to us that everything has to be going on very, very top top level, top notch, you just can't afford to drop the ball. Mm. I drop balls Thank you. and I pick my balls when I, when you drop. You see what I mean? Thank you. Everything right. cannot be urgent and important at the same time. You see what I mean? So if you're overwhelmed and it's okay to feel overwhelmed, everybody feels overwhelmed at one point or the, or the other. You just need to sit down and take a breather you need to fight for your space mm. where you can step back and analyze. Because if you don't do that, you're going to be torn in different places and you're not going to be of good to yourself or to anybody else, not even the family you're trying to be, mm. you know, to, to, to kind of spend quality time with. So you need to fight for that space to be able to sit back and ask yourself, what is that one thing that if I get done today will not just give me the fulfillment that I want, 
but also impact positively on the other aspects, even if I don't. I mean, I tell people, right, I have to pick my battles. A very clean house at this time is not priority ah, for it's me. Not and so <laughs> I'm not going to be jumping up and down to ensure because nobody's even visiting you to start with, okay? So that's not going to give me a headache, right? So I'm going to ask myself, what is important? Two things are important, right? Of course, my job is important. My, my, my work with God is important. My husband and my kids, right? And then I'm able to ask myself, at what point of the day will I have my space? So I say that I'm alone most times in the morning. So my kids wake up at a particular time. So I wake up earlier than them because at that point they can't intrude into my space. So you just need to be creative to look at your realities, to create that space where you're able to identify the most important thing to you. That's how to deal with overwhelming feeling. It comes once in a while, but be able to step back and prioritize, find out what the most important and urgent thing you need to do. But you should be careful in ensuring that not everything is important and urgent at the same time. It's not possible. And that's where personal effectiveness comes in, mm -hmm. right? You need to be personally effective and be sacrificial. Understand that, you know what? You, it's okay to drop the ball. Mm -hmm. It's okay to drop the ball. People drop the ball, okay? Mm -hmm. And you should be comfortable with that. Just make sure that it's not your biggest ball that you drop, okay? Oh, because we can really get to you. Just, you know, so <laughs> what you're saying now, eh, you know, let, let's bring it a bit personal. So my son's birthday was Friday because I was so mm -hmm. overwhelmed with work. I had too many things going on. For us, we start on a Friday and it ends on a Sunday. So technically, my weekend is off. You know, like you yeah. as well, I was also cooking and hosting. You know, um, he, he's just, uh, his, uh, his friends, just a few of them, you know, to just come and let it not look like mommy did not do anything. But you see, I, I like what you said because a lot of times we feel guilty that, you know, certain things are not done at a certain time. You know, so yeah. how do you even help us to fight that guilt? When you see that there's a bit of, you know, an, a, an unbalanced um, scenario and you're trying to pick your fight one, one time at um, one at a time, you know, so how do you not feel guilty and how do you explain it to the people around you, especially your family, because they're the ones that suffer the most, especially if you're a workaholic. Mm. You're right about that. So one of the things I do, you know, so, so, there's one thing I tell people when we talk about work life balance, one key skill you need as an individual is your ability to manage your stakeholders. Okay. Your ability to manage your stakeholders, you know, how to get your husband to do what he doesn't want to do. I'm just using that because oftentimes when we talk about work life balance, you know, it's often the, you know, people who are married, you know, you have, you have kids, you have so many, many things on your plate and all of that. You're trying to juggle it. It doesn't mean that, you know, other people do not have that stress, but it's just the dynamics of being married and being a mother or being a father, you know, that it adds to the whole mix, you know, that makes it very um, overwhelming and all that. And one thing I tell people is, you know, when it gets to that point where you need to not feel guilty, I, I, I believe that, you know, you need to get to a place where you and your, you know, your stakeholders are able to agree on a compromise whether it is at work or even at home, mm. because it is not every time that work should take over home. Mm. So I can imagine that I have an emergency situation at home, and then I have a meeting to lead at work. Trust me, if I choose to go for that meeting, I'm going to be significantly distracted. So it is me only not to say, you know what, as much as I would like to you know, be at this meeting, I will not be able to be there because I have an emergency. And that's where urgency and importance come to play you see what i mean so in me not feeling guilty it's me admitting that i can only do one thing at this point in time you know we've been told a lot of times that you can multitask you should multitask right when you multitask you reduce your effectiveness that is what research shows us recently you know there is the power of the focus so you need to choose one thing being in a meeting and attending to family at the same time can make you lose track of what you're saying in that meeting and then you, you see that you're making mistakes you're making errors that normally would not happen so it's it's you saying okay you know what i can't feel guilty for not attending a meeting because i have to take care of my son who is not feeling well or my daughter who needs my attention with resolving stuff everybody knows that there is pandemic we're all trying to do deal with stuff of course except you're not working with real, real people 
you're not working with people who are understanding and that can happen but we just need to ensure you know that we um are able to really really identify what is important to us and just go for it mm. the guilt the feeling the sense of fulfillment you gain afterwards will replace that guilt guilty feeling especially when you're not being selfish okay so Absolutely. just you know if i have to go for my meeting i also understand for instance <laughs> If this job yes. is do fine, the money will be at the end of the week. <laughs> okay. So let's all just be very happy and manage. I agree. You know, just I know agree. How to manage this Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. 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 Well, yes. Um, I was listening to uh, you, Madupe, and you're making fantastic points. I, you're, it's interesting listening to you. However, it seemed as though the work-life balance we're highlighting more. Um. Uh, uh, married people, families, particularly uh, uh, the women, because it is believed they put in a lot more work. But let's shine the uh, uh, light a little on single people. What is work-life balance like for them? Because I think we overlook single people a lot because we think they have a lot of time on their hands and so they can wake up and just head straight to work. So what is a balanced life, like a coordinated life? What is it like for singles? So, so this is what I was saying. So may, maybe, I mean, not maybe, you're very spot on. And I, I do apologize, you know, for being, you know, um, <laughs> too focused in that direction. You know, the truth is, you know, <laughs> the truth is single people need their sanity as much as, you know, the married people. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a game of whether you're married or you're single, right? Because sometimes, you know, like you rightly said, you know, they, you know, everybody just feels like, ah, you are by yourself. You don't have responsibilities. And they just they, assume you don't have you to do everything for them. Right? And this work is all you're married to. That's mm -hmm. what your life should be about. Mm -hmm. But I will tell single people, right? You, you, you need to create time for other things that are not work related, okay? So what are the things that you do to, to distress, to defocus? Because work is not the only thing there is to you. Work is just one of several things to you. You have friends, you have family. I, I know that we are practicing a lot of social distancing, so maybe a lot of visiting is not happening, but you need to be able to chill. You need to know when to. Let me tell you, so after a very long day of work, I mean, last night, for instance, I, I saw a movie on Netflix, even though I had four sessions, or sorry, two sessions of book club review online, and then I went to shop for my kid's birthday party today, and then I got back home, I was so tired, I played some bit of Candy Crush on my phone and then I got on Netflix and I watched a very good Nollywood movie. Sometimes you just need to, you know, take a break from all the very serious things that are disturbing you or clogging your space to read. You know, because let me quickly say something. Excelling at work should not be your definition of success, should not be your only definition of success. Mm. And so, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I, I like to start, you know, oftentimes when I'm asked to talk about work-life balance, I like to start from what is your definition of success? Because when you get your definition of success right, it then informs how you prioritize, you know, the different activities that you get involved with. I don't know if you get what I mean, yeah. right? So if I understand the fact that the fact that I'm getting an A plus rating at work does not necessarily mean that my life is altogether good. I'm able to focus on those other things that make me me. For instance, I love writing. I love speaking. If you don't invite me to speak, I will create a platform for myself and speak. Those are some ways I used to dis distress. distress. Mm. You know what I mean? So you need to find things that get you going. I mean, recently in my estate, I volunteered, you know, to serve on a com committee that was attending to the needs of the neighbors, you know, where I stayed. And that for me, I did that intentionally because I wanted to make new friends. Mm. At least if I can't be in touch with my old friends, if I can't see them, I have neighbors who together we can, you know, give to a common cause and make it happen. I made new friends during COVID because I do understand the place of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to find the other things that complement you other than work and be able to invest some of your time intentionally, whether you want to watch a movie, whether you want to, you know, just take a walk, find the things that help you take your attention off work okay. because your life is definitely bigger than work. Okay, but the so we'll go on a, sh on a short break. We'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right.